Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for finding my channel on the YouTube network and following me as I explore the wide, amazing world of pens. And we see one worthy of being held up by a crab on a rotating turntable. And you might be able to gather a little bit of that engraving on that cap band. It's a Moon Man. It's a C4. So we're going to look at C1, 2, and 3, and we're going to look at C4 and how it fits into that family, and also there's other ones, like the Q1, that I also think deserves to be in this same family. Beautiful clear acrylic, really nice classic design, because it's an eyedropper with a shutoff valve, and you can see that stainless steel rod that holds that O-ring against the end of the section that avoids any burping or ink coming out when you don't want it. So we're going to explore this pen, compare it to its siblings, and see how that medium Moon Man nib writes. Stay tuned. I paid a few dollars extra for the box because I wanted to see what they've done with the packaging. So this is definitely a Mahjong. And it says design made in China. So they've changed the slogan. And I wanted to make certain there was no confusion about the source of the pen in case somebody thought there was confusion. And there's a nice silver sparkle in this cardboard box. You lift off the lid and you get an instruction manual, and it's Mojong. They've converted as much as they can to that. And we also now have an English version of it. Discusses all the various filling mechanisms. It also talks about cleaning, how to use your pen, idle pen cleaning. So don't leave your pen set for a while without cleaning it. And a warning note for those with small children. Nice that they've really made that good. So as we open up and look at the box, we'll see a nice classic Moon Man eyedropper. Nice red thing at the end. And then we come out with the pen, which you've seen before on the turntable, but that's how it comes out. And nice uh, translucent condom sleeve to keep it protected. I just love this clear acrylic and yes, maybe they'll come out with different colors over time, but I always enjoy getting the clear model so I can definitely see how it's put together, how well it works. And that is a unique clip for Moon Man, a short clip. But as we look at some of the versions I'll compare this to, they've had a short clip before. The cap comes off in a little over two turns. We'll see a nice number six size nib in medium, but it says Moon Man, not Mahjong. So they still haven't changed all the branding. And it should be a gold tone nib to go with the gold tone trim. So it's going to lose some points for that. As we will show you when the pen gets taken apart, this uh, nib assembly unscrews. You can see it through the transparent section. And you can see how that shutoff valve works. You take this big blind cap and you unscrew it counterclockwise. It takes a few turns and you can now see that that stop or that plug is now above the end of the section so ink will now flow into the section. So when you turn the blind cap and that little plug stops any ink from flowing into the section. So if you're on an airplane jostling the pen around, 
moving from cold to hot, which if you had only a little bit of ink and a lot of air, that air pressure could push out ink. So if you're going to use this pen and you've been playing around or doing something that might have changed that ink equilibrium, hold it nib up when you unscrew the blind cap and therefore hopefully you don't get any ink spurting out that could be there because of the air pressure. Classic design, well executed, I like it. So this pen arrived in seven days from order to delivery in my mailbox. I find it interesting that it's JFK, which I'm assuming is uh, the airport in New York that a lot of planes from uh, China would land at, bringing articles to us. But the return to is Inglewood, California. And I've noticed that the shippers now are using a number of different source locations in the United States for this overlabel which ends up being delivered to the United States Post Office for that final delivery to my mailbox. I'm glad to see that they're doing a lot to improve shipping, at least some of the sellers that many of us buy from. So here we have this C4 disassembled as much as I think is necessary to clean the pen, to look at the different bits and pieces and how they work with this eyedropper filling system with a shutoff valve. Take a quick look at the nib assembly. We have the new branded, well, it's not the new branded nib, it's the old Moon Man nib. And we see an M at the bottom for medium. And it's in a Moon Man nib housing, which is very common for this number six nib. And I have a bunch of them, so I'm not planning on pulling the nib or replacing it. Here's a section, nice O-ring. And it's above the threads, which I think is where it belongs, so you don't want ink in the threads. And I'll definitely silicone grease the threads in this O-ring. And when you pull this out, you feel that resistance. You know that O-ring is in good contact. And here's the end of that section, which matches up well with this shutoff valve and that piston. So obviously there's a whole bunch of washers and things in there because you don't want any ink leak as you move that piston up and down to shut it off and open up the ink flow. Nice fine threads, amazing clear acrylic, which Moon Man has done in a number of other pens. If we look inside there, we'll see a, a slot that in theory you could go in there with some type of tool. You'd probably have to make one that had two prongs like this that fit into those slots if you wanted to unscrew that, but I don't see any reason to do that unless decades from now you need to replace those O-rings there that seal against that piston that goes up and down. That piston appears to be stainless steel, so it should be very corrosion resistant. The cap also has that great transparent end to the cap, that finial, kind of big. We see threads there, and the threads are to use, which seems to be a stainless steel screw with that same type of threading, or same type of slot that holds in this really nice little tiny clip. So overall, I'm really happy with what they did. Functional, many uh, people have expressed concerns about eyedroppers burping and doing things with ink that they don't want. So here's a shutoff valve, which has been around since, I would say, the 30s. I have some vintage pens with them. I haven't done videos yet, but who knows, I may someday. The other thing that Moon Man seems to be good at doing is they're good at engraving that cap band with Moon Man, but you'd go around and you'd hope that they put in the model C4, but they don't do that. So that's one of the downsides so decades from now identifying this model might be difficult so you may ask uh, what is the mahjong slash moon man i use those names interchangeably what is their c series of pens well here we have the c1 which i really love and still enjoy as you can see it's almost empty of ink and has a lot of ink in there much more than any of the other pens then they came out with the C2, which is not a pen that excited me. Then they come out with the C3, which excited me even less. And I had a 
mistaken opinion that this was actually a clip, but it's actually a roll stop. There's no opening there. Here's the C4, which is definitely a large pen. I mean, the C1 is not small. This one is much larger. And then I thought I would include these two S series, the S5, which came with great nibs, and the S7, which I haven't reviewed yet. But I talked about this is eyedropper only, eyedropper only, eyedropper only, cartridge converter, or could be eyedropper, cartridge converter, could be eyedropper, and eyedropper only. So one of the things that I didn't like about the C3 is it had a number five nib, but so does the S5, but the S5 gave you a lot of variety of nibs, and I, I like that. So I think we just need to talk about the Wong Kai, which is this is not the first one that I got. This is like the second generation or third generation of it. These pens, and one of, the, one of them I had inked up for almost two years, first time every time, Uncap writes, great pocket pen. And of course, we can't ignore the Q1. I kind of had a feeling that the S5, or sorry, the C4 was related to the Q1, and I think you might see that. This is a more traditional shape pen where this one is more novelty, but I still enjoy it. As you can see, it's been inked up for a long time, and the nib writes very, very well. So those are the series. I could probably bring in more, but that's enough because they had M1s, M2s, a whole bunch of other ones, and Moon Man has been very good at this type of pen better than I think the other Chinese makers. What do you think? Well, I'm going to use one of these Chinese inks that I got a bunch of. And I haven't used number 15 here, which I think is a really nice looking purple. And I think it'll look great in that transparent C4 pen. So let's fill it up. So here's the ink bottle. And as you can see, it has some nice purple glitter in it. And like with most of these inks, you shake it up a little bit and it goes into suspension. And you always should shake up these inks before you fill a pen with them. So let's start filling a pen. So I do have some viewers that ask, Chris, how do you fill those pens? So let's go through step by step. First, take the cap off. Secondly, I would just lower this a little bit, just my way of doing it. You don't have to. Unscrew the section. As I mentioned, it takes a little bit of effort to torque, which you would want because that O-ring there seals up well. You take your bottle of ink. You make certain everything is nice and shook up for that ink. And I'm going to use a syringe because I want to measure how much ink goes in. So we've shaken it up. Take the cap off. Insert the syringe. Pull up some ink. Well, the first syringe I tried to use just didn't fill properly. It's going to be thrown away. I have a bunch of these. I buy them in bulk. So this one, it draws ink all the way up. I know from a water test that this will take about two milliliters of ink. So we have drawn up here, it's a little bit less than three milliliters. So we'll insert the syringe into the barrel and some ink in there and I'm just going to take it to the top of that piston and as you can see there's like a half a milliliter left so two milliliters approximately is what fills that up and then we're going to set the bottle safely aside take the section screw it in place And now you don't have any ink in the feed or nib. So we're going to put the cap on and leave it set upside down for a few minutes so the ink can work its way through the feed to the end of the nib and then we'll be able to write. So I've spent some time with the C4 and you can see that ink in there. And if we turn it around because it's been setting for a while, the glitter does settle out. So you need to just shake it up a little bit and it goes quickly into suspension. And that way it'll be evenly distributed when you write. This is a hefty pen. We'll give you the dimensions. 
I'd almost put it into the oversized category. We talked about the cap taking a little over two turns to remove. It fits great in a hand. It feels good in a hand uncapped like this. And you may ask about posting and look in at the design. I don't think this is going to post well, but you can put that cap on the end. It's not very secure, but if you need to put the cap someplace, you can. And it makes for a long pen. So you saw a little bit of a writing sample in the beginning. So let's do another one and let's rate the pen. Yes, I did say Mahjong. I've been using Moon Man a lot. I apologize. Hopefully it hasn't confused anybody because Moon Man has become Mahjong and they are now celebrating their Chinese origins. So this medium nib writes well, but I had to do a fair bit of writing with it to break in the nib. It seemed to have a little bit of baby's bottom, maybe a little bit of over polishing. So it kind of worked itself in as I wrote a page or two. And now it's very consistent. Before this, it required more pressure to write. It's not a flexible nib, so you might get a little bit of line variation if you put a little pressure on the downstrokes, but not something you're going to do on a regular basis. So let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.8. The nib gets one check. The design and build and everything else gets two checks. And I love the clear look. You know, you're going to have to like a pen like this. It's not for everybody. Two milliliters of ink is a decent amount. It'll last a while. That nib is, you know, not overly wet. Puts down enough ink to really sh make this Tremel ink look great. And as you saw, Mahjong has done a lot with pocket pens and different filling systems and this one's a new one at least as far as my experience goes and I think they did a good job very impressed glad they didn't do a touchdown filler comments welcome so we've reached the end of this video I want to thank all of you for watching appreciate you spending a few minutes with me as I explore pens. Hope this video finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, putting ink on paper. Ah, it's nice. So this is the end. And then we're going to say bye. Go out and do some writing.